My first job TIG welding aluminum, the only type of tungsten available on that job was 2% thoriated. I think most of us would agree that's not our first choice for TIG welding aluminum, but you can make it work. And I figured out this little tip, this little trick, that if I tapered the tip a little bit and then rounded it just a little bit, it would stay that way instead of get those little nodules on it. I'll show you that right now, and then later in the video, we'll talk about some more tips for tungsten. Let's do it. 2% thoriated has gotten a lot of bad press. There is a possibility some of it has been exaggerated, but it's still one of the best performing electrodes for DC TIG welding. The first thing I'm going to do here is put a 30 to 35 degree taper on this 332 electrode. That's what I would normally use for TIG welding steel. Just an all around good grind for TIG welding steel. I'm going to run a bead on some carbon steel very quickly here. And then I'll take that same tip and round it and then run a bead on aluminum. But first, the carbon steel. I've cleaned all the mill scale off, that's really important. But a 2% thoriated gives a nice crisp start. 2% thoriated tends to stay sharp a long time. It maintains a tip a long time and you don't have to sharpen it very often and that's what makes it so popular. So this was a bead on 11 gauge steel. I've cleaned all the mill scale off of it. To get the best results, you can see the tip stayed nice and shiny and sharp. I'm going to take that same tip, but with a different cup size here, and run a bead on aluminum. But before I run that bead on aluminum, I'm going to prep the tip. And the way I'm going to do that is turn my AC balance all the way to max cleaning, and just give it just enough amperage with the foot pedal to where it rounds the tip, where it doesn't put a big old lollipop end on it, it just rounds the tip. So I've got a slight taper with a rounded tip. Now if I don't get too hot with that, it'll stay like that. One important tip though is you got to remember to reset your AC balance to something normal like around 68 to 70 percent EN. I've got nice cleaning action, a pretty controllable stable arc, no big issues, but the biggest thing, we'll take a look at this tip at the end is it going to have nodules on it? Is it going to be misshaped? That's the kicker, because you don't want to have to keep prepping your electrode every single bead. And it looks just about the same as it did when I started. And that's what I have found. As long as I prep the tip right, I can get by using 2% thoriated on aluminum. For what I do, making welding videos, a 332 2% lanthanated does most everything that I want it to do. But I don't always prep it with the same exact angle. If I need to weld something really thin with a really low amp start, I'll prep it like a needle, like the one on the left. That's about a 20 degree. If I need to weld really thick steel at 180 amps, I'll make a more blunt tip. And that is one benefit to having a tungsten grinder that is adjustable, where you can get any grind that you need from 20 to 60 degrees or so. Now here's an example of where you might use a needle-like tip at 20 degrees like box cutter blades that only need about 20 amps to weld, if they even need that, you want to be able to light up at the lowest possible amperage, not nip the end away, and have a stable arc at really low amperage. And you can do that as long as you prep the tip with a pretty steep angle and a really fine grind. If I wanted to weld really thin metal with a 332 electrode, that would do it. Here's an example of where I might use a more blunt tip, is really thick steel, at about 180 amps or so with a 332 diameter electrode. Instead of going up to 1 8 I just put a blunt tip on it like that. Does a pretty good job. I don't really need a really low amperage start on quarter inch steel, so that tip will stay like that a long time. If you put too sharp a point, too fine a taper, if you're at the upper amperage range of a diameter of electrode, you kind of risk blowing the tip off and dumping it in the weld, and you don't want that. So that fairly blunt tip works pretty good on thick steel, also works pretty good on aluminum. A couple of things I like about 2% lanthanated tungsten is that, number one, it carries a lot of current on AC especially, and that's helpful to not have to go up to that next size electrode sometimes. Another thing is that if I taper the tip about 45 degrees or so, I can just weld with it. At medium amperage, I can weld with it for quite a while and it won't, it won't do anything, it just stays that way. 
Laser from CK is kind of the same way, just doesn't carry quite as much amperage. And we'll take a look at laser in a, in a minute. Let's take a look right now though of a 45 degree tapered tip, 2% lanthanated on an aluminum outside corner joint. This is just about the same taper that I used on that thick steel just a few minutes ago. This is 3 16 inch thick aluminum, so I'm probably up around 170 to 185 amps or so, and it's maintaining that tip just fine. My good friend Brad Goodman, he works with me at welderskills.com. He builds dog feeders, dog boxes, does a lot of high-end aluminum work. He really likes the CK laser electrodes for what he does. He's in that medium amperage range. He does a lot of pulsing with the foot pedal to get his stack of dimes look. In fact, he is Deep South Dime Stacker on Instagram. Check him out. This is Brad pulsing with the foot pedal, or pedal pumping as he calls it. You can see how stable that arc is when it goes from high amperage to low amperage. He's got about a 45 degree taper on it, and it seems to stay that way throughout the weld. That's what he likes about laser electrodes, that and good restart capability and good consistency. Brad is Deep South Dime Stacker on Instagram. If you want to go check out some of his work, he does a lot of high-end dog feeders, dog boxes, dog waterers, as well as all kinds of other work for motorsports. Again, this is about a 45 degree taper on that tip put on there by that CK Turbo Sharp. To avoid having to use all different sizes electrode for certain applications, you can get by by preparing the tip differently. There are some people who like to keep a 1 8 electrode in their torch all the time, and that's fine. There are some drawbacks to that, but there's a lot of advantages too. Let's take a look at the difference in arc plume on a needle sharp point as, as opposed to a more blunt point. Each one of these tapers will have a slightly different arc plume, and there's also a lot of overlap on where you can use them. The first arc here is a blunt taper around a 50 degree or so. You can see that arc plume is fairly confined and the bead is fairly narrow. Let's look at this needle sharp point now. This is about a 15 to 20 degree grind and you're going to see a whole different arc plume and actually a halo around it. And that gives a whole different arc plume. It fans out wide. Again, it's got a weird look to it, a little halo around it up top. Let's look at the two side by side now. You can see there's a lot of difference between these two grinds. And of course, one last tip. It does matter how you grind an electrode, how you sharpen an electrode. Mainly what you don't want to do is make your grinding scratches sideways and make them rough. If you're using too rough a wheel and you put the grinding scratches sideways, you can have some really rough arc starts. Let's compare one sharpened by the Turbo Sharp that has a diamond wheel, so it puts a really fine grind on there. That's a nice, crisp arc start. That's what you want. Now let's take a look at the other one done with a grinding wheel, scratches rough and sideways. You can get some really rough arc starts that way with a wandering arc. This is that in slow motion. This won't happen every time and I've got it magnified here so it looks like it's a longer arc but it's just blown up a little bit and in slow motion. Now that won't happen every time but it happens when you least want it to happen like when you're right next to some thin cooling fin. The way to cure that if you don't have a tungsten grinder is get those scratches running lengthwise like this. Even rough grinding marks will do better if they're running lengthwise. My online store is at weldmonger.com. If you're interested in any of the stuff you saw in this video, we have tungsten and filler metal, quality welding gear, and plenty of videos to show you how to get the most out of it.